Hello everybody, Dr. Yu here with the next video from the Calgary Guide video series, COPD Findings on Investigations. This video is part of the COPD topic video series, part of the series of videos we're making on COPD. Please help us reach more viewers by liking the video just as it's starting out and by subscribing to my channel. With that, let's get started. Before we talk about the findings on investigations of COPD, we need to clarify some definitions. Now the lung can be divided into different volumes. And these different volumes all have different names. Before we explain each one, you should know that a lung volume is a lung subdivision that cannot be further subdivided, but a lung capacity describes a lung subdivision that can be further subdivided into different smaller volumes. The maximum amount of air that a lung can support is called a total lung capacity, TLC. This total lung capacity is further subdivided into two subcapacities. One is the residual volume which is the total volume of air within the lungs that cannot be breathed out, even with maximum contraction of expiratory muscles. The other subdivision is called the vital capacity, VC, which is the maximum volume of air involved in one breathing cycle of maximum inspiration and maximum expiration. Now remember that I said that a capacity can be further subdivided into different volumes. Vital capacity includes three volumes, the tidal volume, the inspiratory reserve, and the expiratory reserve. Now, when we're assessing the function of the airways, doctors use the forced expiration test, otherwise known as spirometry. We have patients inhale maximally, then forcefully expire all the air out as quickly as possible. The total volume of air exhaled after a maximal inspiration is called forced vital capacity, FVC. The forced expiratory volumes, such as FEV1, the forced expiratory volume in one second, is simply the volume of air exhaled over time, such as the volume of air exhaled in the first second. We can use the FEV1 and the FVC to calculate the FEV1 over FVC ratio. With airflow tract obstruction, the ratio of air expired in one second over the total volume of air expired is usually lower than normal. We will get into why in a second. We also use other investigations for COPD besides spirometry, such as a pulmonary function test, which includes a spirometry test, but also looks at other components of breathing, such as the lung's diffusion capacity. We can also measure arterial blood gases, ABGs, so as to measure the partial pressure of oxygen or the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the blood. And finally, of course, we can take a chest x-ray of the frontal and lateral parts of the chest. Now to explain the findings on investigations for COPD. The findings on investigations from COPD stem from two main pathophysiological consequences. Number one is airflow obstruction. Number two is lung tissue damage. Airflow obstruction results in reduced ventilation of the alveoli, which makes it so that the blood perfusing the ill-ventilated alveoli does not receive normal amounts of oxygen. This results in hypoxemia, a partial pressure of oxygen of less than 70 millimeters mercury on the arterial blood gas. This also results in a mismatch between the ventilated areas of the lungs and the perfused areas of the lungs, known as the ventilation perfusion mismatch, this results in a high AA gradient. And for an explanation of what the AA gradient is, you can check out the relevant Calgary Guide slide or video on that topic. Airflow obstruction also results in another finding, which is that during expiration, positive pleural pressure squeezes on airways to increase obstruction further. This results in total expiration taking longer time than normal, which results in an FEV1 over FVC ratio of less than 0.7. There's a typo here, apologies for that. Next, COPD also causes lung tissue damage. Because the lung tissue is damaged, there's less to no elastic recoil to push air out of the lungs, further contributing to the phenomenon of increased expiration time, resulting in an FEV1 over FVC ratio of less than 0.7. Not enough elastic recoil to push air out of the lungs also means the lungs don't fully empty. More air trapped within the lungs results in a low, flat diaphragm, meaning that on a frontal chest x-ray, more than 10 posterior ribs can be seen clearly. Lung hyperinflation also means that on spirometry, there will be a greater total lung capacity and a greater vital capacity. Finally, air does not block x-ray beams and will appear blacker on x-ray film. And as a result, on lateral chest x-ray, there will be an increased retrosternal airspace behind the sternum. And on a frontal chest x-ray, the lung fields will appear hyperlucent or darker, and lung markings will be reduced. In addition, because the lungs don't fully empty, more carbon dioxide remains in the lungs and diffuses into the blood. 
This results in hypercapnia, measured on arterial blood gases, as a partial pressure of carbon dioxide greater than 45 millimeters of mercury. Chronic hypercapnia makes breathing centers less sensitive to the high partial pressure of carbon dioxide stimulus for breathing and more reliant on the low partial pressure of oxygen stimulus. Since patients are now more tolerant to high carbon dioxide levels, they are described as carbon dioxide retainers. And this phenomenon is known as carbon dioxide retention or CO2 retention. We must give oxygen carefully to these patients because a high partial pressure of oxygen may suppress the patient's hypoxic respiratory drive, thus reducing their breathing and further increasing their partial pressure of carbon dioxide in their blood. Finally, lung tissue damage also results in the loss of lung parenchyma and vasculature, which reduces the surface area available for gas exchange. On the pulmonary function test, this also shows up as reduced diffusion capacity. And that's it for the findings on investigations of COPD. For more on COPD, you can check out the other COPD videos in the Calgary Guide video series. Again, please like and subscribe. And thank you for watching. See you in the next video.